welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. I'm the author of On This Day in Tudor History, which has served as the inspiration for these daily talks, taking you back into the Tudor period and just sharing some Tudor events. Okay, on this day in Tudor history, the 15th of August, 1603, just under five months after the death of Queen Elizabeth I and, of course, the accession of King James I, Lady Mary Scudamore, nay Shelton, a member of Elizabeth I's Privy Chamber and one of her favourite sleeping companions, was buried at Homelacy in Herefordshire. Now, Mary was in her early 50s when she died. Um, it is thought that she was born circa 1550, 1551. And she was the daughter of Sir John Shelton of Shelton Hall, Norfolk, and Margaret Parker. Mary was second cousin to the Queen, Queen Elizabeth I. Mary's paternal grandmother was Lady Anne Shelton, who before she was married was Lady Anne Boleyn, sister of Thomas Boleyn. And of course, Thomas Boleyn was the father of Queen Anne Boleyn. So Thomas Boleyn was Elizabeth I's maternal grandfather. So there was that family link. And in 1568, Mary Shelton, who became Mary Scudamore, went on to serve her relative, the Queen, as a gentlewoman of the Queen's Privy Chamber. In 1571, she was promoted to Chamberer, and at court, she met Sir John Scudamore, who was a widower with five children. He was also a Catholic. He was a man who was close to Sir James Croft, who was uh, quite an important man. He was controller of the household. Um, Sir John uh, Scudamore had been James Croft's ward in his youth, and Croft had helped uh, John to rise at court and to become a gentleman usher to the Queen. So Mary and John met at court and Mary and John fell in love and they asked uh, Croft to find out if the Queen would approve of their marriage match. Uh, so he did that and unfortunately it was made clear to them that the Queen would not support it. Uh, so they took steps themselves, uh, they were very much in love and so they were married secretly by a Catholic priest in 1574. The Queen, Queen Elizabeth I, was absolutely furious with the couple, with their deception, with the marrying, um, you know, without her approval, without her agreement. And in a letter written to Queen Elizabeth I, Mary, Queen of Scots, mentions a story that she'd heard concerning Elizabeth I's reaction to the news of John and Mary's marriage, the Scudamore's marriage. Uh, she wrote of Lady Talbot refusing to be in service to the Queen because she should be in fear that when you was in wrath, you would do to her as you did to her cousin Scudmore, one of whose fingers you broke and made those of the court believe that it was broken by a chandelier falling down from above. So Mary, Queen of Scots, also accused Elizabeth of attacking another lady who was waiting on her at her table, saying that Elizabeth gave her a great blow with a knife upon the hand. So that sounds horrible. Another letter written by Eleanor Bridges, one of the Queen's maids of honour, stated, The Queen has used Mary Shelton very ill for her marriage. She hath dealt liberal both with blows and evil words and have not yet granted her consent. So Elizabeth was obviously violent in some way to Mary Shelton or Mary Scudamore as her you know, her married name was. Um, whether she really did break her finger, whether it was uh, blows, slaps, whatever, she was absolutely furious with Mary for doing what she did for marrying uh, John without her say so. But the Scudamores were eventually forgiven and continued in their rise at court, with Mary being one of Elizabeth's closest confidants at the end of her reign. 
Mary became ill in 1602 and had to retire to her home at Home Lacey. However, she was able to attend her relative, the Queen's funeral. But she died sometime in the summer of 1603 and was buried, of course, on this day in history in 1603. So... I just wanted to share with you about Mary, just because I find it uh, interesting, uh, Elizabeth's reaction to being betrayed by uh, a woman who was one of her servants, one of her close confidants, um, and a relative as well, and how Elizabeth could react when she felt uh, betrayed in some way. Uh, She had a very hot temper, obviously, we don't know truth of the matter but she certainly had a hot temper thank you for joining me i will of course be back tomorrow with another on this day in tudor history event for you you can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there and that is really useful i would ask you to please subscribe to the channel it just helps um, youtube to spread the word to other youtube users so that they can find me and learn all these nuggets of tudor information Uh, you can hit the bell to be notified as well and of course do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.